all the listeners um please watch it till then i'm begging everybody to watch it till the end because it's really informative all the podcast and particularly this one about the cows please watch it till the end so that you can educate your kids that's my intention Th- thank you so much Hi Shwin welcome to the Elkip show Thank you thank you so much for hosting me Uh it's it's my pleasure to know uh about today's topic so I'm sure the viewers are going to be thrilled also and please viewers make sure that you, you you know you can teach your kids also because the topic is going to be about the cows we do not know what are the values and everything so we today we have Ashwin Sampath Kumaran advocate Ashwin Sampath Kumaran who is also the founder of Dakshin Brindavanam Tell me Ashwin what is dakshin brindavanam well dakshin brindavan is basically a retirement home for cows and bulls i so love that word love yeah. that word retirement home yeah right. so this is a concept that uh, you know it just came out of the blue but this is a concept wherein we actually rescue cows and bulls from slaughter houses and once we rescue them we keep them with us till their natural death so we don't breed cows here we don't milk cows here so we rescue and after rescue we bring them here and we provide them a safe retirement home and where they spend their retirement days peacefully and when they are ready to depart they are be surrounded by vishnu sahasrana ma chanting and they depart to the eternal abode peacefully so so this is what we do in dashmana right now we host about 370 cows and bulls as we speak okay before we get into that first tell me about the cows um the connection in hinduism our puranas our vedas what does our puranas or vedas tell us about cow worship or generally about cows because we all know that krishna has cows with him right so there are i'm sure there must be more significance to that tell me in that way of puranas and vedas what are they telling us about the cows definitely i should explain so to begin with what happens is we you know broadly categorize the vedic scriptures into two parts shrutis and smritis the shruti the one of the four foremost among shruti is rigveda so among the vedic scriptures we will find cow to be referred as rigveda and the other vedic scriptures the vedas the four vedas we find that the cows are referred almost about 24 to 27 times as anarkya anarkya would mean that which should not be killed so the cows have been referred right from the rigveda and later on in the smritis we find numerous references of cows numerous references of cows for example we find that wherever whenever the earth is burdened with the bad you know karma because of the asuras and everything the earth feels heavy that's something which we see very often and earth often goes and complains to brahma yeah who will just take it up to vishnu and so on and so forth so whenever earth take up the form of a cow which means that she is actually quite in distress and she goes to brahma and complains it so so whenever he, she goes to brahma she goes to brahma deva as a cow okay right because and because i'll tell you why because earth is personi cow personified yes okay. there is no other, a very simple thing yeah, and sort of given you know uh, well going much into the shastric point of view i'll tell you we we can find various sukshmas in the vedic scriptures we find the tremendous importance that is given to the cows there is no govinda without go mm. there is no gopal without go mm-hmm. right so the cow is so intricately connected and in anushasana parva of mahabharata krishna says that i listen krishna says that he actually he loves to be surrounded by cows yeah that's the statement yeah. to that yeah and not just that and we also find that in shrimad bhagavatam he says that krishna says that he can be worshiped with cows when you offer suitable paraphernalia for the cows like grass fresh grass sweet grass water and other you know uh, edible items when you worship cow he you are actually worshiping me he says i can be worshiped through cows okay. he says perfect he doesn't say that to any other animal or any other uh, you know uh, object or any other jeeva for that matter and if you see this in the nature of cow there are two important qualities of cow which is tremendously important which you don't find in any other animals that is upakari and nirupadravakari upakari is that she does only favors that is called yes. as upakari yes she takes grass hay husks oil cakes and in turn milk is only a by product i always say that milk is not the objective why cows was reared the cows this is why we say gomaye vasati lakshmi 
Yeah. This is a statement. Gomaye Vasati Lakshmi. Never you will find that Kshire Vasati Lakshmi. Kshira is milk. You will yes. never find Kshire Vasati Lakshmi. He says Gomaye Vasati Lakshmi. In Kaudang recites Maharashmi is what they say, which is why we, you know, spread it in our home and we yes. use it for uh, pujas and everything. Why? Because from Gomaya, from the Kaudang, we can do agriculture and there could be a fantastic outcome. And in that outcome comes prosperity. That's Mahalakshmi actually. So the most important thing that the cow gives is cow dung. Milk is only a byproduct. It's just a by bonus basically. Okay. So she's always upakari, one thing. And second thing, nirubhadravakari. Nirubhadravakari means she doesn't harm anyone. Unless she is harmed, unless she is pushed into that threshold where she has to fight back, unless that she doesn't harm anybody. Her only objective is actually to be you know, very favorable and helpful to others. And she doesn't harm anybody else. Yes. So this is one of the most important quality that we see in cows. And towards the end of Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam ends during the end of uh, Dwapara Yuga. Yes. And it starts, just starts during the start of Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga, yeah. So Parikshit Maharaja, who is the grandson of Arjuna, he is ruling the kingdom. And Srimad Bhagavatam displays a fantastic episode in that particular uh, time period. So it says, when Parikshit Maharaja was walking down, he sees that a particular cow's leg, bull's basically, a bull's legs was broken by a particular person. He is actually, he breaks, he breaks the legs, the four legs of the cow. And Parikshit Maharaja gets furious and Parikshit Maharaja takes out a sword and he goes to kill that particular person. Okay. And that is when Bhagavatam says that, yes, Kali Yuga has arrived, which means that the himsa for cows, in other words, when the cows have been killed, so this uh, abused or tortured, this is a time period when Kali Yuga starts. So the very first symptom of the whole evil called as Kali is the abuse towards cows. Yeah. Right? And she is Sattvaguna personified. And whenever Sattvaguna is actually destroyed, whenever Sattvaguna is killed, then you have to understand that Kali Yuga has started. So she is given the embodiment of the divinity cows and even in you know the attachment towards krishna had with cows you'll find it in numerous references yes. a few quote krishna was herding the cows and ashoda was quite concerned that he's not wearing any shoes because he has to go to the forest he have to climb the govardhan hill but then he's not wearing any shoes so ashoda offers a beautiful pair of shoes to krishna but krishna refuses to wear it because he says that None of my cows have shoes. So even I won't wear shoes. Wow. So the attachment he has for the cows. And you see, the whole aspect of Govardhana episode, he lifted Govardhana here and everything. Yes. He actually did that for the cows, basically. He cannot tolerate any abuses to, that is happening towards the cows and the cowherd men. Yeah. That was his priority. Which is why he himself is called as Govardhanesha. Yeah. Basically, Govardhan means that which increases the cows. Because okay. Govardhan hill was supporting the cows, basically, with the grasses, okay. with okay. the water, with the springs, yeah. and with the medicinal herbs. It was supporting the cows. So, yeah. through this episode, we just see it as an episode, beautiful episode. That's fantastic. Water, water, water. But there are so many sukshmas in it. For example, he was lifting Govardhana to protect the cows. Okay. He was upholding those things which supports cows for example the grass the herbs the springs and everything okay. with that he supported the cow he, he lifted the cow i mean lifted the gold and mountain and he, he gave shelter to all the cows actually uh which is why many times what happens is the going back to the episode where a brahma's episode why does bhumi devi always takes the form of cow and goes to brahma yeah because she knows that when she takes up the form of a cow, Brahma can't refuse the help. Yeah, can't say no to her. <laughs> can't say no to her. Yeah. Just like she is, Bhumi Devi is cow personified. Yeah. So this is uh, one of the few aspects of the glories of cows in uh, scripture. And, and you just recited a sloka. Um, uh, what is the sloka? Go Vasate Lakshmi. Gomeye Vasate Lakshmi. Gome Vasate Lakshmi. Gomeye means cow dung. Okay. Gomeye Vasate Lakshmi. So where is this sloka written? In which in echo in, in any Vedas or where? Well, yeah, numerous. Not in Vedas, it is in Smriti Puranas, but numerous references basically. Not just once. Numerous okay. references. Numerous right. references. Okay, okay. So Puranas. And that is another scripture, that is another shloka. Gavome mm -hmm. Matarasantu 
Pitaras Santu Go Vrishaha. Gavo me Mataras Santu, which means cow is my mother. Pitaras Santu Go Vrishabha. And Rishabha is a bull. Bull. Hmm. Rishabha is my like my father. Okay. And then you have a cow and all the ancient houses, every every house had a cow. And the cow yeah. would give milk. Okay. Yes. It will nurture the babies of the household just like how a mother does. That's yeah. what cow does. And Rishabha, bulls. Bulls used to work hard in the fields, plowing the fields. And bring in returns anash and Ooh, the like father. Your father does. Yeah. So Gavu me matras santu prada pitras santu go prasha grass adatto maya adatam pradhan nandu vashita. There is a shloka, so which means that you know cows are mothers and the bulls are the fathers. So wow. there is a statement. So when the the scriptures are very clear that they have not equated this to any other animal, any other animal. Right. Aren't you sad that we're losing all that that. Anciently, we had uh, houses who had cows. So there is no house without a cow. I'm talking about in India particularly. So how much do you think it's happening these days? I don't think it's happening pretty at much, all. Pretty much 80% of the household doesn't have cows. Doesn't have. And then we're living in apartments, you know, high-rise apartments and everything. Um, how, how do you think the it will come back to that? Like, how do you think people will come back to that and understand no, that it's really important? Honestly, it's impossible. Giving up the standard of the year going, it is impossible because you cannot have cows in your apartments. And even if you're having individual houses in cities, they no longer allow you to keep cows. I mean, in metropolitan cities, the corporations, they don't allow you to keep cows in the limits, the corporation limits inside the house. And you don't have space for it. That's a reality. We have to face a reality, which is why it is one reason why I came up with a unique idea in Dakshin Vrindavan. See, I told you about 370 cows that we rescued. Yes. Yes. Each and every one of them is adopted by a family who live in city. Very good. Okay. So what's your option? So I maybe for some people in cities or outside the country, they will be able. They will not. They will not be in a position to keep a cow in their apartment or in their backyard of the house. Yes. Basically, they keep a cow in Dakshin Vrindavan. Yeah. So they name the cow. Yeah. And you know it's their cow. They sponsor for it, and we send pictures of the cow every fifteen days so that they keep a constant touch of that particular cow. We do video calls to them. Oh wow. This is, we are trying to, you know, match with the modern world of virtual thing, you know. So, okay, now you can't have a cow in your house. You can have a house in Dakshin Vrindavan. They're by supporting an old cow who needs help. Okay. At the same point of time, it's your cow. Okay, Deal so it's money. something, th than nothing. You do, it's it's like at least some, some kind of compensation. When I was young, there was cows. There were two, three cows. I remember, I was fifth, 50 or 6th, you know, years, 1995, 1996. There were one or two cows in the backyard of my house, in my extra house. That's where, where I lived for about 10 years. So there, every day, you know, when we were given, when I was a kid, when we were given food, we were taken near to the particular cattle shed and we would see the cow. And then, then when we, so for example, when I'm eating a curd rice, my mom would say, this curd rice, the ri the milk has come from this cow. Oh. She's giving you food. My mom will tell me that actually. Yeah. So which yeah. means we instantly form a bond with that cow. Instantly yes. form a bond with that cow. And she's, yeah. she's helping me. She's supporting me. Yeah. So this kind of bond was there for all the kids of those generation, actually. Yes. And perhaps our generation would be the last, my generation would be the last 1990s. Yeah. It should be us to experience that. Yeah, I hope it should revive in some or the other way. You hopefully, know? Yes. Hopefully. hopefully, hopefully. I don't know which form it is, like uh, through what you are doing or is there any other forms? You know how in Western countries there are these like community gardens? Have you ever heard about that? Yes, I've heard about it. Yes. Yeah. So each suburb, let's say an area in a city, they have a community garden, uh, which is about like, let's say two acre land or a three acre land. And then they give you these rectangles where you can grow your own food. Okay. I yeah. hope there is, you know, because in India, cow is like our main worship for all Hindus. Very it, much. It's very important because in all the rituals, that is what we need. We need go mutram. We need go, you know, um, the cow dung, and then we need the milk. We need the cow ghee. What else do we need from cow? Like exactly. everything, yeah. practically everything from cows, we need it. Yeah, and we need cows uh, for some of the rituals. If you're entering into a new house and all, you bring the cow. It's a must. Yeah, it's a must. Yes. Now we are bringing all these small, small bronze idols or, you know, silver idols. And then we are putting it in a plate and taking them in. Yeah, so I hope something comes up like community goshalas, you know. Definitely. If it's not possible in the city, it's outskirts, but not one or two. Because if the city is consists of like 1 million people, you have to compensate it in, in some way, right? Somebody Definitely. should think about things like that too. Yeah, so talk to me about your 370 cows.
So do you have any bulls or, uh, or you have only cows with you? 50% of them are bulls. Right. Um, and do you name them? Every single one of them have names. Okay. And they, every single is adopted by someone? Yes. One in family. In the cities? Yeah, in the cities, yes. How, how did this come up, Ashwin? Why did you want to do this and how did this come up? First of all, it was never planned at all. Okay. And you're an, you an advocate. So you're yeah. an advocate in a city, Bangalore, if yes. I'm correct, yeah. right? So why and how? Tell me. I'll explain to you. Well, I started this when I was 22, but I had no seriousness of what I started. So then. you finished your studies or you were in the process of finishing it? Final, uh, final year, basically. Okay, right. Final year of LLV. It's minus a five years course. Yes. <laughs> I started in 2008 and I got it okay. in 2013, uh, June, Jan. So this happened in 2013 uh, of Sankranti Day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Makra Sankranti, we have a habit of feeding the cow. 13 Jan. Yes, 2013 Jan 14th, actually. 14, Jan 14th, okay. Makra Sankranti. So, Makra Sankranti, we all have a, you know, usual ritual and yes. celebration of feeding the cows, actually. It's one of the most important aspects. Yes. So, in the word south, we have a concept called as Matu Pongal, which is basically Pongal. Yes, Pongal. Pongal. Sankranti is also Pongal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, when we have one day exclusively dedicated for cows, that happens next day of Pongal, basically. So, yes. my mom, she, had, she made, gave a whole huge bunch of a bag of, you know, bananas, jaggery and everything. She asked me, just try to find out some cows and go and feed and come. They said for the cows. So we moved to city. Uh, you know, it was very difficult to find cows. But then about 30 kilometers away from, I googled and 30 kilometers away from uh, my place, there was a small uh, farm. That's what it showed. But I went, it was a huge setup. It was a huge farm. It had about 30 cows and huge acres and acres of plantations. Not a small time farmer, plantations. And I started feeding the cows bananas and jaggeries there. So then I saw a small bull calf, about three months old bull calf running around, all joyful, all energy, just like how the kids are, full yeah. of vibrance and energy. It was a very delightful sight. Three small, white, uh, three months old calf. So I was also trying to play with him and all that. And that's when uh, uh, I had a conversation with the owner of the owner of the farm came in. And, he was, uh, and then there was another person who came in. And from what I could hear, that they were actually negotiating the sale of the bull calf with that particular person. The and one which is uh, running around? Yes. Okay. Same bull calf. And the person who came to buy that bull calf is actually a butcher. That is when I realized that there is a huge demand for veal calf. Veal is tender calf meat. It's a huge demand for veal calf. It was a shock for me. So once the butcher left the place, I looked around and I told him, you are selling it to starter. He said, yes. And cardinal sin of me, I tend to argue for things. That's the final year of my law. So I have this... You know, <laughs> arrogance, flight, but yeah, I need to argue for things. I just make you think basically. So I said, I looked around and we, lawyers, we look around for things, clues. So I looked around and there was a huge photograph of Lord Shiva lit with flowers. You know, you know, ma- you are ma- looking to get a logic to convince him. Exactly. <laughs> exactly what happened. So I looked around, there was a huge photograph of Lord Shiva. And then it so happened that. Uh, it clearly indicated the completion of his morning puja. So I asked him, so you are a devotee of Shiva? He said, yes. Okay. And you are sending Nandi to slaughterhouse. It doesn't make any sense to me. Oh my God. <laughs> so he replied back, no, it's immaterial. These bulls, they don't give me anything in return. That's what he told me. Because these bull calves, they don't give me milk and they don't give me anything in return. What's the point in maintaining them? It's not possible to maintain them. So I'm disposing. This disposing is what he used. But it was a shock for me. I, at times, when it comes to abuse of cows, I tend to be quite blunt with people. But that's something which I need to change. It's going to happen anyways. So, <laughs> so I told him that, well, with this act, you have just reserved a first class ticket to hell. You just purchased a first class ticket to hell with this act of selling uh, the particular bull calf to butcher. He asked and he asked me a question. He, you speak so much of dharma and everything. And why don't you take the bull calf and show me an example out of maintaining it? I cannot maintain bull calf. You speak so much of dharma. Take the bull calf. Maintain it. Show an example. Honestly, I didn't expect it because my <laughs> intention was only to put some logic to it. Actually, I didn't expect it. Okay. Well, I paused for a moment and I clearly remember asking myself a question. Am I ready to commit myself to a kick of this bull? Which means 20 years of commitment. Oh. I've turned 42 by then. Minimum 20 years of commitment I would need to take care of this particular bull. I paused. I clearly paused for a moment. And when I paused for a moment, I saw that the bull calf up to until which is running around. It, it also stopped running around. And it took few steps near me, towards me. For me, it was a clear indication actually as to, mm-hmm. uh, I took it as a sign from above. 
I said, I guess I'll take it. I'll take the bull calf. Mm-hmm. And I traveled with my friend who's a co-founder of the Chinrundana. And we kept the bull calf actually between us in the two-wheeler. On a motorbike? Back, yeah, in the bike. A small <laughs> calf. Yeah. And we drove back home. Wasn't your mom like, didn't I ask you to go and feed it? <laughs> Why did hey, you? <laughs> that's, that is the whole point. Because when I tied the bull calf in the lawn of my garden, there was a World War Three in my house. <laughs> right. I tied the bull calf in the lawn. There's a small lawn garden there. I, there was a World War Three in my house, of course. But then I told her, then we found a friend's farm where uh, we spoke with the caretaker. So he said that you take care of the bull calf. We'll pay you. Every month, we'll pay you some money to upkeep. Take care of it. We'll pay you money. And he was okay with that. And the idea was that, okay, me and my friend, we'll pull in money and we'll pay every month, we'll pay some money so that he'll take care of the bull calf. And this when, uh, but this is the first bull calf and he still lives with us, his name is Balaram. And I always say, I am not sure. So you told your mom that you're going to put the, um, keep the bull calf in your friend's farm. Yes. Not in the house. Not in the house. Okay, done. And she was a little relieved. Actually. Yeah, understood. Yeah. <laughs> and then we moved the calf to the friend's farm and he was living there. Uh, for six months he lived I mean he still lives with us by the way his name is Balram and I named him Balram because he's so fair he's milky white fair just like how Balram was yes <laughs> and in our scriptures Balram came first and then came Krishna <laughs> so yes. yeah. his elder brother so we named him Balram we always say he is the founder member of Dakshin Pradavan not me I always say that Okay. Balram so the cow. Balram, Balram the, the bull, cow. bull bull. The bull. Yeah. Okay. He is almost about uh, 12 years now. Oh. So 11 years. Yeah. So and then it so happened that and you know we had no intention of expansion. Clearly no intention of expansion. But another incident happened when I was on a pilgrimage to Madurai, Shivaliputur temple. Mm-hmm. He stopped for to take uh, some tender coconut water in a particular place. And that is when I saw a small bull calf in an under a thatched roof, a small calf, female calf. You know, wailing and crying and crying and crying. So I got curious and I opened up that particular thatch, you know, a shed tent. And I saw that it was actually a makeshift butcher's table. And there was a small calf tied up there. I got a shock of my life. And uh, I immediately called up the highway patrol police and everything. And they came and said, oh, you can't stop. There's a clear law prohibiting slaughter of such small animals in the state. In the state of Tamil Nadu. Is there a law, Ashwin? It depends upon state to state. Every individual state has a different law. Okay. So for Tamil Nadu, it, the law is that you can't butcher the young animal. Below 10 years, you cannot butcher. Any okay. cow below 10 years, you can. There is no clear fully ban on cow slaughter. There's some restriction. In right. some states like Karnataka, Maharashtra, there is a complete ban on cow slaughter. No matter what age, you cannot start up the particular yeah. cow. Yeah. So this happened in, um, uh, what do you say, in Shivali Putra, the highway police came and they all left. They said, there's nothing that we can do because we are unable to find the person. There's only a tent there. The owner mm-hmm. is not being seen. It's a makeshift thing. There's not a permanent setup. So we actually gave an undertaking that we are taking the particular calf. And we were traveling in an SUV there. So we put all our luggages in the back. <laughs> and in the back seat of the calf, we took this calf and we gave it to that particular same farm owner. Next time, he... take a lorry with you. <laughs> I, we did, I did that actually. I did that in Bangalore once. I've done that. So she also lives with us. Her name is Sita Lakshmi. But after that, it was she's non-stop. A, she's a cow. She's not a bull. She's a cow. The second Sita one is a Lakshmi. Cow. The second one. Sita Lakshmi. It's a cow. Okay. And after that, it was non-stop. We, then there was no looking back. You have then, to go to my place. I'm from Andhra in a small town called, it's a district headquarters called Ongol. Okay. So there's Ongol. a breed of cow called as Ongol actually. Yeah. The Ongol bulls are like really famous. And now nowadays, you know, they're extinct, you know. But the cows, they're eating from the garbages. You know, the municipality garbages in the corners of the roads. I feel so sad anytime I, you know, I watch it. They eat from the garbages and nobody's taking care of them. They're so lean and everything. You should go to Ongol. But you take a train, good train next time. <laughs> exactly. Speaking of garbage, let me let me say something. So in 2015, we had rescued a cow by name Manjari from Bangalore. So she was, she came and she appeared to be quite well-fed cow because she had a stewed stock and everything. A bit well-fed cow. But two days, she didn't eat any food. She didn't even drink water. So you're not quite concerned. Then we called up the vet and the vet came in. And the first thing we thought is because of the travel stress, because she traveled all the way from Bangalore to Palakkad where the cows are. You know, we thought it's a travel stress. Even the next day when she needed food, we got panicked. Then we asked the doctor, the doctor came and the doctor checked. He said, he said, sir, the entire stomach is full of plastic. We performed a surgery, the doctor, of course, the doctor performed a surgery and I have the videos, photos of it. We extracted 43 kgs of plastic from her stomach. 
43 oh kgs it was it had purse it had nails it had coins it was food bags it was you know the disposable hotel parcel bags right it had parcel bags and what not it had so much of garbage in that particular animal that it was horrendous you don't have to be an animal lover or a cow lover to understand this is brain cruelty yeah. this is this is actually a small uh, what do you say yeah it's an earphone basically this is maybe 5 grams or 6 grams you cannot eat this and this mm-hmm. poor cow was carrying 43 kgs of plastic and once she recovered from the anesthesia that was given to her after the surgery we all cried because she drank four buckets of water non stop we were filling up she was drinking it we were filling up she was drinking it everyone including the doctor had tears in their eyes actually and this is satisfaction tears that we have got because the poor thing was struggling a lot and she 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 lived up to 2021 with us Six years after that, she lived with us, and 2021 December she departed oh. peacefully. She departed. She yeah, she lived for quite some time. So we have find that this is one of the most cruel thing that we can do using of disposable plastics. I always tell people, you don't want to do anything for cows, even by physical volunteering or anything. Fine, just stop using plastic. That's that's more than enough. Yeah. Oh my God. <clears throat> so, Yeah. and you know this is the thing because to run dakshin vrindavan right now we need about 5000 kilos of green grass every day 5 tons of green grass is required every day we need it every day which means on a month we need 1 and 1/2 lakh kilos of green grass actually we need <laughs> every day every every month we need it <laughs> you need a govardhan parvat <laughs> Yeah, exactly so uh, we get it from parvat we get it from satyamangalam parvat so i call satyamangalam is our govardhan actually okay. so and uh, we need about half tons of uh, wheat bran to feed them right now the running expenses to run the goshala is approximately about 12 12 to 13 lakh rupees per month okay okay and the place it is in palakkad No, no, the place yeah. is it owned or uh... you know we have two places basically right now we are sh- constructing sheds for the cows in our own land Okay. And at the present moment, we are working in the rented facility. But right. once the construction house will be over by in about a month or so, we'll be moving the cows there. Okay. So, uh, you know, the whole uh, expenses about thirteen lakhs a month, which means on a year it is about one one and a half crores. It will be mm-hmm. one and a half running expenses. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about the infrastructural cost like sheds construction. That's all different. Yeah. Running expenses. So I was thinking. The mercy of Krishna. That is, ten years back when I started this, when the farmer asked me that question, if I had a slightest idea that ten years later I'll incur a cost of one and a half lakh rupee, one and a half lakh, like one and a half crores a, a year, and if I had to, if I had a, you know, thought that okay, you need to raise about twelve lakhs every month, I would have never started this. I don't know. This is this is not for my cup of tea. My God, I can't do this. So I find that the Lord has been mercifully hiding the cost factor. <laughs> and he pushed us to do a service seva for the cows they are quite convinced by that actually yeah because we have seen his hands in various forms in 2000 we were many of them expenses were taken from our own pocket at that time then 2015 we had ne- i didn't have food to feed the cows for the next day i had 45 cows back then we didn't have the food to feed for money to feed the cows for the next day so we were quite upset sad we were thinking and i took my bead bags and i was chanting the names of narayana and i was praying to him listen lord you sent us the cows to serve it's you did better you arrange some grass for them otherwise yeah. i'm going to yeah. open the gates of the goshala and the cows yeah. will be out to fend for yeah. themselves you won't believe me that because there was an outstanding bill from the grass supplier we have to pay him approximately 10 lakh rupees okay outstanding bill was it wow that's mm. it's huge so he said that see i can't supply more grass until you clear the dues and we had no money actually to clear the dues you won't believe me that day night around 1:30 2 o'clock in the night i'm getting a call from a person from usa who said i heard a lot about your adventure and i really want to support you guys so i'm transferring some donation to you i said i said thank you so much I, my intention was that whatever he gives i'll clear the dues and i'll tell him to supply grass and i my intention was to yeah, yeah, yeah keep yeah. The, keep the supply going yeah miracle of miracles that he donated exactly 10 lakh rupees why did he want to donate 10 lakhs exactly i never met him like who donates 10 lakhs in one go i pulled him as one of the trustees of dakshin vrindavan he's right now one of the trustees of dakshin vrindavan thanks to him really deepak shankar is his name he works for microsoft and he's one of the uh, directors of dakshin vrindavan i really Trust. hope you know i really hope my podcast listeners please do support 
you know, his cause. I'm going to give all the links of um, Ashwin. This is not for Ashwin. Ashwin is not doing it for himself. He's doing it for the cause. It's a really good cause, Ashwin. I, I am just getting goosebumps. I don't know what to say here also. So so, I have seen that in yes. all these aspects, we see the hands of Krishna. He's been pushing to do seva. Okay, do it. You need help? Struggle. I'll give it to you. But you need to struggle. He, 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 you know, if you want it, I always think about it. If he wanted, he could have avoided Mahabharata war. Or even if the very thought that Krishna thinks that, okay, let all the Kauravas die. They would have all died. Thought of him is sufficient, actually. But he didn't do it. He sat. He said, you fight. You, you work now. You work hard, actually. So that we should learn a lesson, right? We Exactly. Are exactly. And he likes to do that. He, he, he likes to put us to hard work. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> Always, actually. <Yeah. laughs> so he says, now you guys go work. Just like that, you're saying this, okay, you work, I'll give support. Whenever it's required, I'll keep, keep giving support. But you, we have to work hard. Do, do your karma. So okay. that miracle of the Lord, we have seen it in numerous instances, numerous. Okay. So each cow you have adopted, so you have 370 now, right? Yes. So you have each individual or one person adopts uh, multiple cows also sometimes. So we have both things. There's one, there's one or two donors who are about two, three cows. But most of it is one to one. Okay. Of course, almost about 20 cows yet to be adopted, but uh, 350 are adopted. Okay. So you don't take out the milk of the cows. That means the calves are drinking the milk. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because we don't breed the cows here. So there is no milk. So unless they lacked it, you don't get milk. Okay. So the cows don't milk give 24 by 7, 365 days. The cows will give milk only when she is pregnant with calf. Yes. Okay. We don't impregnate them. There is no bulls and cows are separated. Okay. And we don't impregnate the cows. We don't breed why? the cows. Can I ask ah, of course. That's a fantastic question. I'm going to answer that. We the, see in Dakshin Vrindavan, there are certain principles that I formulated and I follow, which I feel this are, that is one reason we are able to serve more and more cows. That is, see, given an option, I will rescue more cows from slaughterhouses than increasing the mouths to feed inside the Goshala. Okay. Given the limitation of resources, limitation of land, limitation of infrastructure like sheds, limitation of many other things basically. I doesn't at all make sense for me to breed cows inside the Goshala. Which okay. in, if I'm breeding, say, I'll tell you what, we have 370 cows. Yeah. Breedable cows will be about 100. Okay. Breedable age cows. Mm. Suppose I allow them to breed, next year I'll have 100 cows, correct? No? Which means the strength will go from 370 to 470. Yeah. It's not about 470. But then that 100 cows that I'm increasing here, I would prefer them to be rescued from slaughter than breeding here. Understood. Your point is more about the rescue angle. Priority. Angle. I, I, I Our priority is that, okay, I have to increase. Okay, they no, have to it's, increase. It's, it's we'll, completely we'll understandable. It is completely understandable. You to, you know, see... Everybody can't do everything. There exactly. are roles for each person. You to are play. right. You are right. Yeah. We so, function as a rescue and retirement home. Simple. Yeah. You are not someone who is going to fight for the extinction of the cows. You are someone no. who is the rescuer of the cows. Exactly. And then give a life and retirement home for them. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's good to be clear. You know, it's it's really good to be clear. Exactly. And then, of course, we do get pregnant cows. We do get mm. pregnant cows. So when the pregnant cows give birth, when you ask pregnant cows, when they give birth, the calf, the milk entirely goes to the calf. Mm. That's a that's an irony. So, so what no happens? profit at all for you? No zero. Zero, Nothing and then maybe you're putting something from your pockets as well. Oh, let my mom doesn't hear this podcast. Okay, so. <laughs> Give me her number. I'll send it to her. <laughs> so uh, another thing. That's an irony, you know. So what happens? We get we rescue a lot of orphan cows. Mm. Lot of orphan cows we rescue. Mm. So to feed them, we buy milk from outside. Mm. So all the locals because it's a typical rural village place. So all the locals. In, you have 300 cows and why are you buying milk from me? And they ask this question. You should be supplying milk to the entire district. Yeah. We have 360 <laughs> cows. I said, then, you know, we have orphan for cows. We build, we build buy about 20 to 30 liters of milk every day from outside to feed our orphan cows. Mm, great. Great work, Ashwin. I have to, I'm sure all the listeners will, you know, applaud this. Really, thank you so much. You're doing a part of me also, which I'm supposed to do. So thank you for that. And through this, I'm telling you, I am going to adopt a cow too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. If so possible, much. I'll ask my daughter and son also. I'm not going to push them, but I will tell them, you know, I'm sure if, you, if they watch the podcast, that's what they're going to do too. Um, <laughs> yeah. You. 
So, so for the for the next generation kids, you know, they do not know the value of the cow. What are the values of cows? Like scientific values. I'll tell you what. You know, yeah. to teach the kids, it is a very simple thing. Extremely simple ways you can tell them how important the cows are. Very logical, simple, plain, layman language. Who who else can explain logically better than you? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I'll explain it to you. Very basic thing. The cow gives cow dung. You cannot think of going near to any excretion of any animal in this planet except from cow near it. The cow, cow excretion near it actually. The excretion of so many animals, okay, including humans. Oh, it's yeah. quite you know okay. uh, quite vulgar, but let me say that. Yeah, sure. We, we yeah. are the most uh, you know advanced yeah, species yeah, and so on and so forth. Go, go ahead, yeah. Ah, excuse of so many animals and the cows ones are the only one you can think of going near it. You wouldn't think of going near it actually. Mm. It doesn't give us bad order to start with. Mm. And second of all, that is what which we use to clean. Can you imagine we are using the excretion of an animal to clean and to purify a particular place. Yes. In our ancient houses, in other words, yes. ancestor houses, well, the front of the house where you put columns, rangoris and everything, it was always smeared with cow dung. You, are, you basically mix the dung, um, cow yeah. dung and then you sprinkle yeah. it in front of the house and then you put the column on top of it, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And they so, say that it's antibacterial too. It the... is antibacterial, it is antiseptic actually. It is antibacterial, mm. antiseptic. It's mm. highly, you know, good. Right now, there are so many patents about cow dung's antiseptic and antibacterial properties in USA. You know what? Whenever I have a discussion with my son regarding anything, you know, he'll be like, oh, come on, mom. You know, it can't be true. And I'm like, if some Westerner comes and tell you that there is a patent. and we oh, well, we agree that. Yeah, <laughs> we, study, we studied in Oxford University or, you know, all the reputed universities. Then they'll be Wait. like, oh, really? Then they'll accept it. That Does yesterday it... I'm telling him, today, you're not, whenever I'm asking him, what do you know about it? And he's, he gave me little small bits. And I'm like, if this, some Westerner guy tells you, he'll be like, oh, really? Then they'll start doing it. Even if they give it in a goalie, you know, to take it, <laughs> if they cure everything, they'll take it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So your son, there's a point in whatever he's saying. There's a, there's a pramana for that in Bhagavad Gita. He says, Yadya dacharadi shreshta janaha tatta devedar sayat pramanam gurute logastha dhanivartade. He says, Whatever great people say, okay, that will be accepted as a pramana or a proof by everybody else. And everybody else try to do what the great people say. Okay. But unfortunately for us, we think that the Westerners are so great, actually. Yes. <laughs> and that, well, this is what our own ancestors, our own uh, grandmothers and grandfathers were saying and doing, actually. Yeah. All the way. But then that is there with all the kids of the generation, including me at one point of time, of course, sure. yes. Sure, me too. Sure. All of us. So once we age and mature, once we get dharmic parents, and then we'll slowly realize, okay, well, we were doing this here. Don't, don't be there, there, For example, There is a saying in Telugu, I'm, I'm from Andhra. So there is a shankan lo poste gan tirdham avadu. You know the shankar. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. Sh- yeah. yeah. If you pour water through that only, then it will become the tirdham. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, and you are saying, so cow dung and then cow urine. Ka- so yeah. Cow, and ha, for example, see, simple things. So many patterns, actually. So many patterns with cow dung and cow urine. One of my friend, he was also uh, the applicants of one of the patterns of cow properties of antiseptic and antibacterial properties of cow urine in uh, USA. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you go to a typical village, right, if they have any wounds or something, They'll simply apply cow urine and it'll walk off. Really? They do it. Even now they do it. They'll simply apply cow urine in that and they'll walk off. You have to imagine they're actually doing it with the excretia liquid or solid of an animal. Mm-hmm. If they are to do with an animal's excretia, they can do it only with cows. Yes. That actually puts her above all the other species of this earth. And the day we removed cow dung from agriculture, we had to start eating poison in the name of food. You remove cow from agriculture... The, then the food is poison. Then everything is poison right now. It is. Everything is poison. Yeah, That's everything what is, is poison. Happening. That is why we're we are going all these scans and all kinds of diseases which are unknown of, actually. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. that is one very simple way of uh, understanding them. Another aspect is that if you see the cows, right, she has a huge maternal, you know, what do you say, capability, mm-hmm. maternal like instincts. Mother yeah, like a mother. So huge it is. I'll tell you what, I've seen, I have seen, I've, I've got pictures also where, uh, you know, the cow will feed dogs, orphan dogs, puppies. Mm. I've got photographs and videos 
of monkeys going and drinking milk from that particular cow. In the cow of our houses, I don't have cow, but those times we had cow. She clearly knows that only a portion of that milk goes to her calf and the rest of the milk goes to the, the owner of the particular household. But she loves the owner of the household so much. Now, and let me compare something. You cannot think a human sparing that particular person's breast milk to any other human. Forget about species. Yeah. I'm not even speaking of species. Yeah. Species is totally out of question, actually. I've seen only Bishnoi is doing it. I'll come to that part later. Forget about species. But then this cow, she gives milk to all the other animals. It gives to humans totally different species who she clearly knows that, okay, this man is going to, you know, take all my, half of my milk and my baby is going to get, get half of it. But she still gives milk. Mm -hmm. She continues to love that particular owner of that particular establishment household. This huge maternal instinct is one of the most important qualities of the cow. And another aspect when we connected to this particular thing, we have seen that in Dakshin Vrindavan, we find a lot of orphan calves. When the orphan calves come, there's a beautiful sight in the Goshala. All the calves, cows will come. They all will see, observe, lick, nurture. It is as if they are communicating to that calf that, yeah, they're there. You are fine. You be comfortable here. We'll take care of you. Wow. Don't worry that you've got orphan. We'll take care of you. And I have seen cows who do not lactate. They started lactating for this particular calf. I've seen that instance. Wow. She doesn't have any calf. She doesn't lactate. But she started lactating for this particular calf. Mm -hmm. So this speaks huge volumes about their motherly qualities. And our scriptures, she, our scripture says about seven uh, mothers, basically. Mothers, biological mother. Okay. Nurse. Mm-hmm. Wife of a guru, wife of the king, and uh, earth, mother earth. Okay. And then comes Dhatri, uh, but then, then comes Kau, our own uh, Gau, mm. basically. Of course, I missed one, correct. Yeah. And the second one is wife of a Vedic scholar, Brahmana okay. Pati, wife of a Vedic scholar. Okay. So these seven people are the ones whom we consider as mother, Sapta Mata, they say, one of the seven mothers of our dharma. Yeah. So this, here we find, apart from the earth, there's only one you know, divinity that has been given the status that is Gau. No other name has been given the status. Okay. And uh, there's a there's another interesting aspect to it. Whenever there's a prana pratishta that is happening in a temple, mm -hmm. whenever there is a samprokshna that is happening in a temple. Samprokshna the, meaning cleaning. Not cleaning is, you know, every 12 years they do the purification ceremony. Kumbha the purification, Yeah, the purification. Right. And after after Grahana also they do the samprokshna. They do. The, yeah, that is a different purification actually. Okay. This happens very complex and it happens every 12 years with the deities also. Suppose the deity is supposed to be removed from the uh, uh, shrine for Got renovation. It. Or okay. for any other aspects. Right. You know how it is done? They tie a rope to that particular deity. And that rope is tied to a cow. And the cow will take few steps. And the deity will be... The, the, symbolically, the deity is removed. The thing is that when a cow does it, it is not considered as an offense. Oh. So okay. when a human removes a deity, it is considered as an offense. A huge aparada, actually. Oh. Even if it is for a genuine purpose, it is an aparada. Okay. But the Lord will easily forgive it has been done by the cow. So it's a cow who is brought in. The cow will... They ask a few steps to take. The cow will take a few steps and the deity is removed. Okay. So, I mean, likewise, we can go on and on and on speaking so many small, small aspects about the cows, which yeah. actually put her above the pedestal of all of us. All of us. All of us. Yeah. Equal to God. Yes, exactly. That's how it is. Yeah. So, and I heard this also, like lastly, I want to ask you, because I heard it somewhere that when a cow licks your hand, the one's hand, if it's in yeah. your family, it can sense whatever the um, health problem you're going through and it Women, will give its milk to, you know, um, get things right, like health, health wise. This is very true, actually. I'll tell you how. There was a research which was done by a Swedish man near Mandia, near Melkota. <laughs> now, then we accepted. Again, we we'll accept only then, actually. <laughs> So yeah. this cow, there's a every you know, there's a beauty. Let me come to that when I before I do that, let me come to this. India has a lot of cow breeds. Yes, yes. A lot of cow breeds, like Ongol is a breed, mm. and then Tharparkar is a breed in Rajasthan and all that. See the beauty of this particular distribution of breeds. Maximum rainfall in India, you will find it in Western Ghats and in northeast part of the country. Mm. The least rainfall, we will find it in Thar Desert and that belt, Sindh okay. belt. Mm. We consider it's all the part of Akhanda Bharat, basically. The part okay. of Akhanda Bharat. Mm -hmm. So you will find that cow breed, called as Vachur cows, which lives in the western guards of India, Kerala. Mm -hmm. It hardly gives one, one and a half liters of milk. 
Okay. And which is a cow which gives maximum milk. Okay? Is it from Thar Desert? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. How? See the latest huge distribution. Now they, it's all abused. The milk industry have abused it. It's a different issue. Mm-hmm. But I'm just thinking of the ancient system of distribution of this breed. So the reason is here you have many other methods of hydrating yourself. Depending upon the social status of the people, yeah. many people take tender coconut water, mm. numerous rivers, Mm-hmm. All right. Most it was tender coconut water. Then they, you know, I what is that? Um, ice apples. What do you call it as the thal vriksh, the thal uh, thing. Thal di munja in Telugu. Ah, apples, exactly. So, and some people they depend upon toddy. It's extracted mm-hmm. from you know coconut and palms mm-hmm. and all that. So in other words, depending upon the social status, they used to they use various tree natural products to hydrate themselves. Yeah. You will not find coconut trees after Gujarat. It's over. <laughs> it's okay. end actually. So. <laughs> For them, they need to have different methods to hydrate themselves. So nature bless them. You get least vegetation in that area. But you get the cow which gives maximum milk in that area. This is a nature's fantastic way of distributing it. So they you know, drink lassi and buttermilk and other things to hydrate themselves. So this distribution of breed is a fantastic aspect, which is a whole different topic altogether. But coming back to our topic of Mysore, I mean, this research that was done there. So in Melkote, there was this breed of cow called as Halikar. Halikar is a breed of cow which is found near Mysore belt. So Mysore this Halikar, Karnataka, right? It's Karnataka, a... Karnataka. So this cow, he was doing research of this cow, and this cow used to lick the you know hands of the owner, and the owner was having fever, okay. basically fever. And this cow went to the hills to graze, and this research cow was following that particular cow for about three months during the course of various other animals. And he found that the cow is eating those herbs, which are actually Ayurvedic herbs for curing fever. So basically the cow will eat the, you know, that herbs and what you get the milk out of it, the owner will drink it and the diseases will be cured. And such people never sold their cows to soccer house. That need to be underlined. Yep. Yep. So the point is that the, she's very intelligent, extremely intelligent. I haven't going to share a very personal aspect of my life, actually, which happened. Uh, Two days before my grand, great grandfather, basically, great grandfather departed. The two cows in the household, it stopped eating food. Oh, it knew. It's it knew. It stopped eating food, and he was a very healthy man. Like he was, in other words, he was old, but there was no health yeah, but, issues. Yeah, like we could exactly. anticipate that. Okay. He departed on a very auspicious day, on a Ekadashi day. He went to Ekadashi to the temple. He paid obeisances in the temple, and he came back. He paid obeisances in the house altar deity. They are old deities of Narayana mm. and all that mm. worship. Generations old. Okay. He paid obeisances and he didn't get up. And he didn't get up? He didn't get up. He paid obeisances like this and he departed. Two days before that, the cow stopped eating food. Oh. So my grandmother always used to say this happened when for my father-in-law. She stopped eating food. And it's only after the cremation everything happened, they started somehow eating some food actually. Oh. So they sense, they have, they're extremely intelligent. And they sense everything that is happening in that uh, household. They don't know who they are, what they are. Which is why she is considered some merc- you know, merciful, very, very extremely merciful living being. Yeah. Ashwin, can you um, end this podcast by telling me a good sloka on cow? Oh, I'll start that. Mm. So in Mahabharata, Anishasana Parva, 80th chapter, third shloka says, Gavo samagrato nityam, gava prishtata evacha, Gavo me sarvataishchaiva, gavam madhe vasamyaham. I used to recite this. The trans- Really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so the translation of the shloka is that, let there be cows in front of me, let there be cows behind me, let there be cows around me, and I live with the cows. This is what Sri Krishna says about cows. Tada, and tada, it should happen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> with all the humans, basically. They should all yes. live harmoniously with the cows. Yes, yes. This is a fantastic shloka from Mahabharata Anishasana Parva. Anishasana Parva is filled with references towards cows. We will get into that sometime definitely. Well, that's a whole session yeah. analyzing Anishasana Parva actually. Oh, thank you so much, Ashwin. I, I, I'm, I really don't know how much I can thank you. Um, I hope all the listeners, um, please watch it till the end. I'm begging everybody to watch it till the end because... It's really informative. All the podcasts and particularly this one about the cows, please watch it till the end so that you can educate your kids. That's my intention. Th- thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patisha Ji. Thank you so thank much. You.